Well, good afternoon, my friends. Let's assume for a moment that the Bible is true, that the things that are written in it have in the main mostly happened and the ones that are still future are about to happen. The book of Revelation tells us, and the word revelation means something was revealed to us. It's the revelation of Jesus Christ to his church, to mankind. So Jesus has revealed to us things that are going to take place in the future. So let's just assume for a moment that whether you believe it or not, that is true. And you've woken up one morning and your wife is missing or your husband is missing. You've gone to get the kids out of bed and they're not there, they're missing. Maybe you were walking the children to school, holding them hand in hand, and all of a sudden they vanished and you're looking all around and you can't see where they went. Let's just assume for a moment that you have woken up and you are in the middle of the tribulation. The tribulation has happened. The rapture has happened. The church and every Christian you ever knew has gone. They just vanished. The government and everybody else will tell you that aliens come and took them and, and all kinds of whatever reason. But deep down in your heart, you know that what they told you was true, and that they are now with Jesus in heaven. But you're not there. You're stuck here. You missed it. You, you blew it. What is the world going to look like during this period. This is what I want to talk about today without going into the whole theology of everything. What is the world going to look like? How will you know that you are actually in the tribulation period? And second, once you realize that, what are you going to do about it? It's too late to get saved. That period of grace that was what we call the church age, that period of grace is gone. You're now in the time of God's judgment. I've been telling you all the way along that God has given 6,000 years for man to sort himself out and to come to know him. The last 2,000 years after Jesus died on that cross, the, pay for you, the penalty for your sin and my sin and by grace you could say, thank you, Lord Jesus, I receive you as my Lord and my Saviour. You missed the boat. If you're still there, if you're watching this, I've gone. I've gone, I'm not here anymore. You're watching this video. You missed the boat because you were too stupid, too pig-headed, too stubborn, too, too something to actually listen to what you were getting told. What is the world going to look like? Well, Jesus revealed to us in the book of Revelation a number of the things, and I want to tell you before we get started that it is extremely awful and horrible. Now, many of you will say, well, if God is such a loving God, why would he permit this to happen? Well, his time of his love is gone. He gave you 2,000 years of his love to be rescued from this and to marry him in heaven, the bride of Christ. That's where I am. I'm up in heaven marrying the Lord. And I will come back at the end of the seven-year tribulation period and um, I will come back. What happens? There will be seven years of horror and absolute terror. The seven-year tribulation period is God pouring out his wrath, his anger on the earth. Now, the first three and a half years um, is the rise of the Antichrist, the man of lawlessness, that um, he will promise peace to the Jews and to the rest of the world. The world at this stage is leaderless, and let's face it, we can see that now. 
America is completely and utterly leaderless under the Biden administration. Um, Israel has just taken on a new prime minister, so its government is completely leaderless. They are completely abandoning God and um, promoting the rainbow flag and flying the rainbow flag over their houses of parliament. An abomination in God's sight and, um, and uh, there is no order. There is no order. There is no leadership in the country. So this seven-year period is God pouring out his anger. Now, people say all the time, well, we all go through tribulation. We all go through hard times. Yes, we do. But that's Satan giving us a hard time, not God. This is God's anger. This is, this is God's wrath. He has had enough of mankind rejecting him, disobeying him, not wanting to be with him except for the church. But the church is gone. See, you missed your boat. You missed the boat. And I'm saying that there are a lot of people who are going to miss the boat, people who even think that they're Christians when they're not. And sadly to say, 90% of the Catholic Church um, will miss this boat because you're not saved by being a Catholic. You're saved by being a believer in Jesus, having accepted the Lord Jesus Christ into your heart as the Lord and Saviour. You willingly accept him, not doctrines of the church. Seventh-day Adventists, doctrines of the Seventh-day Adventist church, no. Doctrines of the Baptist church, no. Doctrines of the Ang, no. Did you personally receive the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Saviour? Obviously you didn't or you wouldn't be here watching this video. Funny thing is you can't go run down the road and talk to your pastor about it because he's gone. And if there is a pastor of a church there, don't listen to him because he got it wrong in the first place. Any pastor that's still on the earth at this point in time, you don't want to be talking to him, trust me. So there is unimaginable terror and wrath on the earth. Revelation 13, 7 tells us that the Antichrist arrives, so he's known as the man of sin, a man who will arise who will achieve victory both in politics and in war. He will be recognized by his rapid rise in popularity. You see, he can't be let loose until after the church is taken away in the rapture. The restrainer is holding him back. But now that the church has gone, the restrainer has gone, and he will come forward and bring his demonic horror with him. Violence across the world will continue to increase. Now, we're already seeing a violence across the world, every, right across the major cities of America. We see violence and, and mur murders are increasing in Murders in New York have increased 40% in the last two years. Chicago, the same. Chicago was bad enough before. So violence is going to continue to increase, both individually in, in people just killing each other, nation against nation, domestically. Men will indiscriminately kill each other as peace is removed. We're seeing peace being removed now from the earth. In Lebanon at the moment, we're seeing gunfights taking place at fuel stations where people want to get fuel and somebody else wants the fuel that you're getting, so they shoot you in the street. We see this outlined in Revelation chapter 6, verses 3 and 4. There will be extreme inflation. There will be extreme inflation on the earth. Poverty. There will be a complete and utter lack of food. What is one of the reasons why there will be a lack of food? Take the New Zealand government, for example. 
she is determined to get rid of dairy farms. Now, dairy farms are the lifeblood of the New Zealand economy. And she wants to get rid of farms. And she wants to get rid of dairy cows. So there's going to be little meat. There'll be no milk, no cheese, no butter, no nothing, except for what they manufacture artificially. So the economy is going to die. A day's wages, you will work for a day, will be required to buy enough food for one person. So how are you going to get enough person for a family, enough food for a family? In a very short space of time, people, a quarter of the world's population will be killed through war, through famine, and pestilence. Now, pestilence is a virus. We've already forgotten the Zika or the Zika virus that affected a number of people, and particularly pregnant women who in Africa and um, their babies were born completely deformed, but their heads were way too small. See, Revelation tells us is that there's going to be one virus after another, a pestilence, one after the other. So no matter how much they lock you down in your house, no sooner, well, we're already seeing it in Australia, where the states are just suddenly exploding in, in coronavirus cases, and this is what, supposedly the third mutation that has taken place at the moment. You need the protection of the Lord, but it's too late for you. That's, that's gone. Wild beasts, Revelation 6, verses 5 and 6, you can look it up. Famine, viruses, and wild beasts will devour a quarter of the world's population. A huge number of people will experience a religious conversion and become followers of Jesus Christ. They're not Christians. The Christians are gone. They will become followers of Jesus because they will see him and the angels in the heavenly places. So there will be a, a conversion of people who are following um, Jesus and most of these people will be killed. They will be hunted down and killed. And if you want to know what that's going to feel like, just think back to Nazi Germany or communist Russia, communist China, <clears throat> where the secret police do nothing else but hunt you down, hunt you down, hunt you down, ferret you out and kill you. Revelation 7, verse 21. There will be great earthquakes. At the moment, there are more earthquakes happening around the world than at any other time. They're happening all over the place. The sun and the moon is going to turn red. And all the islands that are underwater, they are underwater mountains. They will be removed. Proverbs 16.20 so underwater mountains will be removed. So at the moment in New Zealand, we are seeing the most ridiculous government decisions to save the nation. New Zealand is not going to exist. New Zealand will disappear. It is an underwater mountain. It is going to vanish underwater. And there is nothing that the government of New Zealand can do about it. Hawaii will disappear. Samoa will disappear. All the underwater islands, according to the book of Revelation, will be removed. The Bahamas will go on. They are the tops of mountains. And Jesus is telling us that these mountains are going to be removed. And I tell you what, it's not very far away. So all of the plans of the government to save the planet, which includes the Pope, because he's leading this to save the world, to save the planet, <clears throat> through stopping you from driving your car and, and stopping your cows passing wind. It's all a waste of time, people, because the country's going to disappear completely unless it turns back to Jesus now. After that time when the mountains have disappeared, a great period of calm 
that will follow the great earthquake that did that will give those who survive this time a false sense of security. Let me tell you that unless you've got a really good boat, not many people from New Zealand are going to survive because they're a long way from anywhere else. And it's a long way to swim. A third of the earth, a third of all the trees and all the green grass will be burned up due to a comet or some other thing that hits the earth. Revelation chapter 8, verse 7. The sea will become like blood, killing a third of all the ocean creatures and destroying a third of all shipping. Revelation 8, 8 and 9. A star, which is named Wormwood, will fall to earth and poison a third of all the fresh water on the earth, killing millions and millions of people. Revelation 8, 10 to 11. The sun and the moon and the stars will lose a third of their light output. The earth is going to go dark. Day and night will be reduced by a third. There is some speculation that the earth will actually shift in its orbit and that we will only have 16 hours a day of, of sunlight instead of 24. Revelation 8, 12. Fierce locust-like beings will be released from underground, which will only attack people who are not followers of Jesus. It will be extremely painful, but it will only last nine months, so it won't be too bad. Revelation 9, 1 to 11. An army of 200 million horse-like creatures will kill one-third of mankind. Now, I don't know what these creatures are. Um, Jesus has just told them they're obviously demonic beings of some sort. During this time, two men of Jewish witnesses, uh, two, two men known as witnesses of Jewish origin, will preach the gospel of Jesus Christ for three and a half years. That's in the first three and a half years of the seven-year tribulation period. And they will be killed at the three and a half um, year mark. Uh, they start preaching at the beginning of the tribulation. Um, at three and a half years, they will be killed and they'll lie in the ground uh, or lie in the streets for three days. These two will be responsible for three and a half years of worldwide drought and will be killed by the Antichrist, known as the beast in the Bible. After three and a half days, they will um, come back to life and move out to heaven, and they will be seen by the whole world. People will be required to receive a mark on their right hand or on their forehead in order to buy or sell anything. But all who receive this mark will receive a malignant, loathsome sore on their body in a short space of time. Revelation 13, verses 13 to 18. The oceans will chemically change and become like the blood of dead men and everything in the sea will die. Revelation 16.3 The Euphrates River will dry up and allow kings of the east to march westward and engage in war. Now, that's not all of it. That's just a little bit to give you an indication um, of what it's going to be like. So you're going to wake up. You've missed the rapture. You didn't believe. Once the rapture occurs, my friends, and the church has gone, the Bible says the restrainer, which is the Holy Spirit, who is restraining evil, he is removed as well. So this is when the man of sin, the man of lawlessness, comes on the scene. And he promises peace to the Jews and allows them to build the third temple again. These these plans for the third temple are already they're already done. They're they're, they're already taking place. Um, they've got all the material. The priests are all in training. It's all ready to go. So it's going to happen whether you believe it or not. 
And at the end of three and a half years, he's going to change his mind. He's going to break the peace treaty that he signed. So there's obviously going to be a period of war, a period of unsettledness um, when this all starts because the Antichrist or the man of lawlessness, he does not appear on the scene. Let's get this straight. He does not appear on the scene while the church is here. But when you wake up in the morning and every Christian you've ever known is gone, then you know that it started. You know that it's true, that it's happening. For many of you who have rejected the gospel up until this time, and you've been told many, many times, you've had many opportunities to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior. Salvation for you is out of the question. You rejected Jesus when he came to you with his loving hands hurled out wide. And there is no opportunity given to you to be saved at this time. Because you rejected the love of our Saviour. For those of you who were never given that opportunity, who never um, understood or realised what was going on, yes, you will have the opportunity to believe in him because the angels will be in the sky. You will see them. You won't see the rapture. Just in the blink, everything's different. But the but the but this period of time, the sky will be boiling. Um, stars will be falling down and hitting the earth. Create there will, there will be total calamity. And for those of you who are Christians who think you're so brave that you're going to go through this, and uh, come out smiling because this is what the Lord, you are so totally deluded that it's just unbelievable. You will not get through this because if you're a Christian, you're going to have your head cut off. So, my friends, what are we going to do about it? What is the, what is, what is the, um, what is, what is the, protection that you require. What do you do now? You've woken up, the church is gone, your wife's gone, your kids are gone, you're on your own. You can't ask me because I'm gone. That's why I'm give, making this video for you, so that you can actually see. Because I'm just as concerned about you then as I was when I made the video. So you need a survival guide on what to do and what not to do. I'm entitling this video, What is the World Going to Look Like? Well, half the countries, you know, the island countries like Samoa, the Bahamas, New Zealand, they don't exist anymore. They're just gone. They've vanished. There's a Maori legend that um, some fellow um, fished New Zealand up out of the water in a canoe. Well, it's going back. It's going back. Going back where it came from, the bottom of the ocean. So how are you going to survive? My next message will be a survival guide, and it's aimed um, at your children and at your grandchildren, my grand, great-grandchildren, my grandchildren, grandchildren, great-grandchildren what to do in order to survive this period. <clears throat> because the one thing that you have to decide, do you want to keep your eternal soul or do you want to spend eternity in hell burning in fire for all eternity? That is a decision you're going to make. Now, I'm going to be really blunt here because time is so short that I don't have time to be polite. This applies to 99 or 98% of, of Catholic people who believe they're Christians, who believe they're saved because they're Catholics. They believe they're saved because the priest says some prayers and, and pronounces them forgiven. That is the greatest lie, according to the Bible, that is the greatest lie on earth and always has been. I have been saying for over 40 years that it is a very sad thing that the Catholic Church is sending more people to hell than all the rest of the cults put together because 
the Pope is not the um, not a Christ vicar on earth, as they call it. We each and every one of us have to come to an individual decision where we individually say, Lord Jesus Christ, I ask you to forgive me for my sin. I recognize, Lord Jesus, that you are King of Kings and Lord of Lords, Prince of Peace, Counselor, Almighty God. And in you, I put my trust. I ask that you come into my life and that you save me from my sin. Forgive me, my Lord, for all of my sin. And I hand my life over to you and ask you to be my Lord and my Saviour forever. Now, every one of us, no matter what denomination we're in, has to do this. It is an individual thing and no church, no religion can get you saved. This is the period of grace, people. This is the period of grace where God is handing out his grace and his love through the Lord Jesus Christ. And only those who accept it now will be raptured out and become the bride of Christ in heaven. And if you've had opportunities to do this many times, and you've, no, nah, I don't believe that garbage, no, nah, don't want no part of that, then you are not going to get another chance. At this point, the Bible says you will be deluded with unbelief, you will believe the lie, and you are lost. But if you have not had that opportunity, if you have not understood, then you will be given another opportunity during the tribulation period. But when you accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Saviour, you will be killed. So the decision you have to make here and now is, are you concerned about your eternity? You see, are you concerned about where your soul will spend eternity? Because you're either going to spend it in heaven or on earth here um, in the millennium time, or you're going to spend it in hell. So you have woken up, you're faced with the fact that you're in the tribulation period. Your first decision is... Where do I want to spend eternity? Do I want to spend eternity with the Lord Jesus Christ or do I want to spend it in hell, burning in fire with the Antichrist and the beast and his demons? That's the first decision you've got to make. And in my next broadcast, I'll talk to you about what to do and how to do it. Because this period of love, this period of grace, this period that we're living in now is rapidly coming to a close. And when you wake up on that morning and we've all gone, it's over. There's no more love as far as what's happening in the world. Horror, such as not been dreamed in a movie yet, will break forth on this earth and you're going to be part of it. So you have to decide what are you going to do? And I'm going to produce for you a survival guide. Survival guide, how do, I, how do I survive if I'm lost in the Australian outback in the middle of the desert? Well, this will be a survival guide. How do I survive now? And we're talking about your survival spiritually, not your survival physically, because it's an odds-on bet that you will be hunted down, dragged out and beheaded. In this period of time, very few Christians will get through. A few will, and uh, you'll have to persevere to the end. But the great bulk of you, if you give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ during this time, you will be killed. You will be hunted down and killed. The time of love, the time of grace is over, my friends. You missed the boat, so what are you going to do about it? I'll talk about that next time. Yeah.